and what it's doing to properties uh, along the coast. And uh, the Office of Planning is being very uh, proactive in saying, well, how do we deal with this? So what we're going to do is uh, they've actually done a study. We're going to talk about the study they've done and uh, try to figure out what, what can we do about this. So first of all, um, let's put a slide up, because the, the, the second slide, because I think it kind of illustrates the problem. So on this slide, you'll see on the right that uh, probably a North Shore uh, house that's uh, severely uh, being, uh, the beach is severely eroded and it's uh, attacking the actual house itself. Eventually it'll probably fall into the ocean. So that's kind of frames the situation or the problem. So what I'd like to ask you ladies, I'll start off with Justine, is what are we planning to do about that? And tell us about your plan. Sure. Um, maybe I can speak briefly about where we come from in the Coastal Zone Management Program, right. if that's okay. That'd be great. Um, we are a federally funded uh, state partnership with um, NOAA, Office for Coastal Management. Right. And the purpose of the program, which is housed in our state office of planning, is to look at a balanced um, perspective of managing development in regard to consideration of our state's natural resources. Um, and in, in terms of um, sea level rise, this is absolutely um, an issue that we're looking at as part of our coastal hazards is sea levels are rising and a lot of the development that has been permitted in the past is now in the way. Um, and how do we grapple with that? The state has the sea level rise report on showing the projections. And um, some of the conversations that we've been a part of and been hearing are, you know, we need to adapt and we understand that we absolutely do and we know how to protect and accommodate to an extent. But how do we retreat from sea level rise and coastal erosion? And that's exactly what this report is looking at. Um, and stemmed by um, an action team from our state ocean resources management plan. So how do we retreat? Huh. Well, that's a really complicated question. Right. Um, what the report does is we've performed a background report um, with a literature review from successful implementation of managed retreat. Um, also took into consideration um, the experiences of two different areas, um, New Jersey being one, and then California and the Ventura Coast being another of successful implementation of managed retreat. Uh, excuse me, let me jump yeah. in. Um, this is based off of uh, a catastrophic event that mm -hmm. uh, Justine was talking about for New Jersey, a catastrophic event right. from uh, Superstorm Sandy. And right. a catastrophic event that I'm referring to means uh, uh, like a large uh, event, like a Superstorm Sandy or a hurricane. And then the other event that Justine was talking about is in Ventura County, California, which is uh, chronic coastal erosion, such as what we experience here in Hawaii oftentimes is like rising sea levels or uh, coastal shoreline erosion due to rising sea levels or high surf events which erode our shoreline. So we took a look at uh, those two types of events in uh, generating our report. Uh, chronic coastal erosion, which causes erosion of our beaches, and uh, catastrophic events, because those are what we find in our report that causes managed retreat. Okay. Yes. So I was just reading an article in Civil Beat um, yesterday about um, a person who was building a brand new house on the North Shore. And if you look at the picture in Civil Beat, like here's the road. And the, the uh, ocean's right up to the road. It's already eroding the road. And directly across the street from the, ro from the road, this guy is, or this person, is building a brand new house. And he spent like $440,000 just on the lot. And who knows what the cost of the uh, house will be once he gets that up. But that seems to be uh, kind of a rash move. I guess you don't want to comment on that, but uh, maybe you can comment on the fact that we're still seem to be building houses right next to the ocean mm -hmm. when the ocean is expanding because it's heating up and that's causing sea level rise. So how can we address this kind of thing? Is, is it something that the state has res any responsibility for, or is it just telling this guy, look, here's the situation and you're here at your own risk? Any kind of comments on that, Justine? Um, it's probably a little bit of both. I think sea level rise is not something that's new and it's not um, 
something that the state is hiding from. Last year, they issued a sea level rise report through um, uh, the Climate Commission. Right. And, um, you know, the sea, as you mentioned, is right there um, in this case. And I can't speak right. to the property owner right. um, and this developer. Um, but I think that there's only so much you can do, but we need, and we can do, you know, outreach and education about the risks. Um, but the property owner is taking a potential risk themselves. So, are there a lot of complications to, to this? Sandy, we talked briefly before we started the show. What about insurance? I mean, can people who build their houses like right next to the ocean like that, where it's, you know, it's obviously it's going to get inundated sometime? Well, if you have a mortgage and your mortgage requires you to get insurance, then the insurance is generally dictated by the National Flood Insurance Program, which is a national program. Federal program. Uh, the right. federal, federal, excuse mm -hmm. me, you're correct. It's a federal program. And so federal um, programs are federally subsidized by our federal tax dollars. Mm -hmm. And um, that is slowly changing. In 2020, it will change to be a more um, risk-based assessment. And so our uh, federal flood insurance program will be uh, much higher, our, our premiums will be much higher than it is currently now. And so if you are a very wealthy individual and you could afford your property outright and do not need to acquire a mortgage, then you probably, you may not have, um, you may not get uh, insurance, but that's at your own risk. Yeah. So, yes. so I lived in Texas and I lived in Florida I lived in Virginia and near the beach. And every four or five years, a major storm comes in and washes all these houses out. <clears throat> but they all had this federal flood insurance. And they just like rebuilt their house. There was no personal problem other than, you know, losing some of their personal property and all that kind of stuff. But it just seems like they just, you know, oh, I don't care. The uh, feds are going to bail me out yes. and I'm going to get a new house out of this deal. Yes. That, that is um, a concern, and yes, our uh, federal flood insurance uh, program is undercapitalized, is, is underwater, literally. Yeah, really. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, um, so that, is, that is a concern, yes. And so they are um, changing it in 2020 is what I've been reading. Mm -hmm. So hopefully um, it uh, will give some people pause to purchase uh, near the shore or right. near uh, in low inland flood prone areas right. because their uh, mortgage will require them to buy flood insurance and that flood insurance will be uh, very expensive for them to afford. Yeah, right. So mm -hmm. that's like a disincentive it, to build your house beside the ocean unless like you said you're a very wealthy individual and you know what's a couple of million dollars. I like the experience. I'm going to live here as long as I can. No it, worries. Right? It, it, could, it could be. <laughs> Was there any, uh, have you uh, visited any of the communities up there on the North Shore and other areas where they could be prone to this kind of uh, uh, we, situation? We both have visited yeah. uh, North Shore communities mm -hmm. and neighbor island communities that are subject to coastal erosion, chronic coastal erosion. Yes. So, so what are they saying? What's the, what's the community, what's the feel that you get from the community? Is there any sense of urgency? And are they saying, oh my God, what can we do? Or what can you do for us? What's the situation? Communities up there? Uh, well, we haven't had, uh, through the, the project itself, there were a couple of focus groups in some of these yeah. areas. Um, and that was uh, supported by our, our consultant for the, for the most part. Um, and so they did provide some insight into the report. Uh, however, we haven't engaged with the, com the communities themselves. Uh, we're in the state office of planning, which is mostly like the statewide policy level. And we haven't really had the same opportunities to do that. So talking about policies, what are the, some of the uh, complications of policy? I mean, can you just give an edict? Thou shalt move thy, thy house from the shore inland two miles? Or what are all the issues? You're a lawyer Sandy, by trade. So tell us some of the comp how complicated this, this could be. Uh, uh, when we first started with the Manager Treat project, we thought that the State yeah. Office of Planning thought that we could just come up with a checklist. Like if you do one, two, three, four, five, six, you could mm -hmm. just move. Whether it is a whole urban area along the shore, whether it's a condominium, whether it's a road or sewage treatment plant or a single family, uh, single family home, if you just did one, two, three, four, five, six, you could move. Um, but that's just not the case. There are yeah. so many different issues at stake. 
there's uh, social justice issues. Um, uh, if you are a, a very wealthy individual and bought your home as an investment property versus a, a Kama Aina family that's lived there for generations and inherited your property, are you treated the same? Should the state buy you out? Mm -hmm. um, then, Does um, the state have the funds to buy you out? Exactly. That's, right. I mean, that's a, big, that's a big question as well. Uh, and then if, if we move you back, where do we move you to? Is there infrastructure inland to move you to? Because we're moving um, a, a, a whole uh, segment of the community inland. Um, is there infrastructure? Is there hospitals? Are there schools? Uh, a, a, everything. Are there roads? Yeah. Uh, utilities, you are a utility person, uh, uh, is, there, is there a support system to, to move you to? Um, and so, and how much is that going to cost the state? So, going on to that, mm -hmm. as part of your analysis, are you putting together like a, an economic model of how much this might cost so that we can sort of capture the magnitude of the problem and start looking at, well, like how are we going to pay for it or what are we going to do? Um, well, we haven't, uh, I don't think we have plans for an economic model to, move, to look at 70, 750 miles of shoreline um, and moving all of that back because I think looking at the complexities, that's just not possible. Um, I think what the report really alludes to is that the state will have to be very strategic in working with the counties to determine if managed retreat is considered as an adaptation option what it is that we invest our dollars into um, that supports the communities um, and protects from uh, coastal flooding um, and inundation in the future. So I think it's identifying what the priorities need to be um, and which will help determine how those funds are allocated. So can you do a trade-off between uh, managed retreat and armoring your shoreline? Is that I know, I know in your report you talked briefly about uh, those options. Is that something, you know, a trade-off between the economics of moving everybody inland as opposed to, you know, putting in dikes like they did in, you know, they do in Holland, you know, and barriers. Who well, talk about that? You, you do. <laughs> that, I mean, that's, that's interesting. I think it, those are very different analyses. So right. if you put in dikes and um, lose the beaches, what are, what are the costs to the community in terms of recreation and public trust right. um, and the subsistence factors in terms of utilizing those resources that we, you know, market to the world as to come, come to our beaches yeah. and lay in our sand. Mm -hmm. um, and on the other hand, you know, can you move certain built structures? Um, oh, look at Waikiki, the big hotels. I mean, yeah. I've seen water sloshing right up against the foundation of some mm -hmm. hotels until they start pumping more sand and you know building the beach back up. So. Yeah, and and a lot of uh, states are grappling with the same issue. And there's different options that were that they've done. You know, beach renourishment is something that um, the state is looking at as well, um, and that's a potential temporary solution, but you have to keep replenishing and maintaining, ma maintaining that. And that's a, it's almost like an infrastructure um, operations and maintenance budget. Absolutely, yeah. every what, three to five years, you have to re replenish. Yeah, exactly. yeah. And, and uh, maybe that'll happen more frequently as the, you know, as the storms get worse and washes sand out. Of course, sometimes a, s a storm will actually wash sand in. It's like true. almost yeah, overnight yeah. sometimes. Wow, where did all that sand come from? <laughs> Yeah. So what's going on in the legislature? Um, you're in the policy department, you said, and mm -hmm. you, know, you look at policy. So what are the people thinking at the you know, top level? What kind of policies are, are we thinking about right now? Well, there's certainly a lot uh, related to sea level rise and climate change. Um, they're, they're narrowing down, as is kind of the season. Uh, we've seen bills that are related to um, uh, establishing a sea level rise relocation program um, to looking at incorporating more extreme levels of sea level rise. Um, also, uh, arm, where to armor and where to do retreat. Mm -hmm. um, there's also been um, proposed changes to our statute in 205A um, for the Coastal Zone Management Act here in the state. Um, what else is there? Real estate uh, disclosures. Real estate disclosures, that's a big one. That's a big one. Mm -hmm. um, and purchasers disclosures as well. I think on the other side there was one. Yeah. Um, and then looking at um, 
different types of solutions to sea level rise via nature-based solutions, I think is another one. What's a nature-based solution? Uh, using oh. like green infrastructure versus like hardening, uh, like, uh, like, like putting in mangroves and things like that. No, to help. we don't put mangroves in in Hawaii. They're no. invasive. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, like if we could like do like dune restorations, mm -hmm. or uh, yeah. that's a nature-based solution versus like uh, like a seawall. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, we're going to cut to a short break right now, and we'll okay. be back after the break. So, take us away. Hey, aloha. My name is Andrew Lanning. I'm the host of Security Matters Hawaii, airing every Wednesday here on Think Tech Hawaii, live from the studios. I'll bring you guests. I'll bring you information about the things in security that matter to keeping you safe, your coworkers safe, your family safe, to keep our community safe. Uh, we want to teach you about those things in our industry that, you know, may be a little outside of your experience. So please join me because security matters. Aloha. Aloha and mabuhai. My name is Emmy Ortega Anderson, inviting you to join us every Tuesday here on Pinoy Power Hawaii with Think Tech Hawaii. We come to your home at 12 noon every Tuesday. We invite you to uh, listen, watch uh, for our mission of empowerment. We aim to enrich, enlighten, educate, entertain, and we hope to empower. Again, maraming. Salamat po, mabuhay, and aloha. Okay, I, I had a question I asked you guys in the, in the green room or whatever before <laughs> we started off about uh, ownership of the land. Like when the a property gets inundated, does that property revert back to the state? And what, what, what are about landowners' rights? Have we looked at any of that yet? Or what's the story? And taxes, because then your property is severely devalued. Mm -hmm or non-existent, so the county is going to lose a ton of taxes. So, here to comment on that. We, we did uh, look at the uh, property values if we retreat uh, in, in the report, and we, we were concerned there, uh, that issue was raised. If we retreat, what happens to the county's tax base? Mm -hmm. Because the counties derive a lot of their tax uh, dollars uh, from, from high coastal uh, properties. And so that was a consideration uh, that we had to take into account um, if, if we were treated. And so, yes, that was something we needed to discuss with the counties. Um, that was another, an, another factor okay. and, and to manage retreat because, yeah. Okay. So um, what about moving roads? We, have you actually looked at moving roads? And, and the other question I would have on that part of that question is, like, how far do you move it in? And do you move it up? Like, you know, if we put raise the roads up to, say, 100 feet off the, the deck mm -hmm. along the edge of the mountains as we go along, and then we have little feeder roads down below. Yeah. So is that something you guys would look at, or is that, who does that? You want to talk about the example? I, I think you could talk sure. about Ventura County. <laughs> yeah, so one of the um, examples of implementation was in Ventura County, um, where a two-mile bike path um, was being chronically eroded. And part of the challenge was determining how, you know, if we could, they could move it, and they did. Um, but it took about 20 years, and this is two miles. Wow, um, and years. it was really? either, I forget if the, the path was on state, state property and then moved to county, or county and state, forget. But two government entities um, negotiating, moving um, the bike path, um, and then it would encroach on some of the parking spaces of a local fairground, which um, wasn't received particularly well. Um, and that took over 20 years for a two-mile bike path. So those are some of the complications that we can take. And if yeah. you factor in private land ownership and private structures um, and other infrastructure, like sewer, water lines, and power, um, that, that just adds to the complication. And so it's not particularly clear how long it would take, but it, it, sh it may take a while and a lot of conversation. So I'm kind of hearing this all tied up in the courts while seawater is still right. It's not going to wait for the, the yeah. uh, lawyers to fight it out and duke it out. Um, you know, it's, it's happening. So uh, maybe we just need to look at armoring, like putting in these uh, you know, uh, barriers. That might be the easiest way to go. What do you guys think about that? 
Oh, well, um, it depends what you mean by easy. Um, you know, you'd also have to consider habitat loss for species and recreation loss for the public. Um, you know, where are the sea turtles going to bask and they're endangered? You know, are we, you know, uh, adding to their loss of habitat? Um, you know, when you market Hawaii now, will we have seawalls and people basking on seawalls. I, I mean, those are some of, just some, <laughs> of yeah. some of the things that wouldn't make it easy, I right. think. So, yeah. Well, I guess there's, uh, there don't appear to be any silver bullets out there for this <laughs> thing, you know. Like, yeah, yeah. You look at uh, what Chip Fletcher at the University of Hawaii uh, does, his, uh, his uh, inundation maps, like they're really scary. Mm -hmm. Doesn't yeah. take a lot to flood out all of Waikiki and take take out the airport and all that, mm -hmm. and and we seem to be already uh, running into opposition. Like they want to put in a flood control at the Alawai Canal, and I read an article today or yesterday that they had a community meeting about it, and the community came out really hard against it. Um, do you care to comment on that? Is there any kind of a solution here? I don't think we work on the Alawai Canal issue, mm -hmm. but I think in Hawaii, uh, you know, we're a small community, and I think it's excellent that people are engaged in what's going on yeah. in this town. Um, I think we have to get out in front uh, uh, and educate people on what's going on. Uh, and I think so long as people are um, are aware of the issues, I, I think it, I think it'll turn out well. You know, I think it's just when people are not. Uh, educated and people don't feel like they have a voice, I think that's when things go sideways. Okay, great lead in. Could you put up the first slide, Rich? I want to lead into your report, okay. which is, an, you know, it's, it's a report, I read through it, it's, it's well done, and it's an educational document. Mm -hmm. And you're here on Think Tech Hawaii to get the <laughs> word out. Yeah. So we definitely want people to know that there's a report, there's a lot of good work done on it. So. Would you care to comment or talk about your report? Something you should be proud of. Oh, thank you. Well, the report can be accessed on our website, certainly, at www.planning.hawaii.gov. And it is funded by our federal partners at NOAA. Thank you very much. Um, and yes, I think it's a, an excellent report that starts a conversation that is going to be a really challenging conversation. Um, but, you know, having considering adaptation and putting that into the planning process and having that process to engage the public and educate the public, like Sandy mentioned, about you know, what some of the risks are, um, what the challenges may be, and how we can potentially move forward in certain areas mm -hmm. um, is definitely part of the solution to addressing you know, these very daunting presentations by Dr. Fletcher, Dr. Fletcher about um, right. some of the risks that we have. Who was, add anything? Yeah, he was a sub-consultant on this report. Chip okay. was, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, okay, so we talk to the general public, we educate them and everything like that. What's the, you know, what do we expect them to do? What's the outcome of that? I mean, they can become aware. Mm -hmm. okay, okay, I'm aware. Mm -hmm. And once again, the report talks a little bit of what we can do about it. But bottom line is it's going to cost a lot of money no matter yeah. what happens. Yeah. And we're stretched right now yes. in this state. We've mm -hmm. got rail, which has really become expensive. We've got all the other issues, homelessness, housing, education. Everybody's out trying to get you know, on their particular program. Mm -hmm. So any comments about that that you can talk about or not? Um, no, we, we do have some really hard choices to make. And when the time comes, we have to make the hard choice. Are we going to continue building along the shore? Are we going to continue armoring our shoreline and losing our precious beaches and habitats? You know, we have to make those hard choices. Let's not make those decisions harder on ourselves and on our future, on our children, on our environment. You know, let's make the correct decisions. You know, we have the tools here in front of us. We have, you know, the research materials in front of us to make the correct decision now for the future. Let's do that. Okay, so what are the kind of next steps that you're going to look at? I mean, I would think that economic modeling, so we know the scope of the problem, would be kind of helpful. Is mm -hmm. that something you got? I mean, I'll throw yeah. that out as a suggestion. Yeah, I like that. Okay. 
Yeah, no, that's definitely something to consider. We um, also try, wanted to look at, uh, for example, um, where other types of uh, retreat, like uh, transfer development rights or rolling easements, um, have been successfully done. Um, we want to re-engage with our action team to, um, after they've had some time to digest this report and um, you know, expand our stakeholder base to continue the conversation and um, learn what else we need to know um, to be able to make these decisions um, in a concerted way. So maybe we could buy some time, like putting houses on stilts. Like if you go in Texas and you go on these mm -hmm. coastal areas, every house there is built on these big pilings. Some of them mm. are like 10, well, higher than that, 15, 20 feet mm -hmm. high. So they box it all in at the lower level, use it to store stuff. But mm -hmm. bottom line is the sea can rush in at a major mm -hmm. event and swish all that out, but the house is still left standing. That it, eventually recedes and hopefully you get a storm that piles some sand back up on the beach. Maybe we should be talking to our smart architects about yeah. Accommod design. Yeah. Yeah. Accommodation is one of the uh, adaptation methods right. referenced. It's referenced here in the yeah. Yeah. Well, we've come to the end of our time. Um, is there, are there any parting words that you ladies would like to share? Um, well, no. I think just thanks for having us on the show and, um, you know, the Coastal Zone Management Program, you know, we are dedicated to looking at a balanced perspective, um, including managed retreat as, you know, a part of the conversation in terms of adaptation. And I think there's going to be a gamut of strategies that we'll have to employ, and there's no one magic bullet for our entire coastline. Um, although we all want one, we <laughs> certainly do. Um, you know, states all over the country, states, you know, countries are dealing with this. And so, um, we would look forward to engaging with additional people and members to work together as this is a state issue, the people that right. live here, yeah. um, and it's not one agency issue, one office or program. It really is something that we all have to work towards together to find a solution on how we're going to have a great future in Hawaii. We're all in the same canoe, right? Yes, all paddling absolutely. in the same direction. Well, I think it's really great that the state planning office is uh, taking this initiative. Thank you, ladies, for uh, participating. Thank you for and, the opportunity. Uh, thank you for having great us. Great having you, and thank you for your service, as they always say. It's great. So thank that's you. it. So we'll see you next Wednesday at, uh, at the Hawaii, the state of clean energy.